the beginning of your document, you need to have a cover page. You will probably be given one, so you can just copy and paste it and make sure it looks nice. But if you're not, you can design one based on the general recommendations that uh, you will be given. And that is to include the university logo, to put a title of your work and include your name. Usually it will also need to contain the word count of the final work. To create a cover page at the beginning of your document, you need to go and click before the very first word of your document. In my case, that's the abstract. Then if you go to the insert tab, you can see the page break option. Page break will allow you to move everything after this position to a new page, which in my case means it's freeing up the first page of the document. And then I can use that to put the cover. I'm just going to leave a note that this will be for the cover page and the second page at the moment is the abstract. Page break is useful to use whenever you want the text after it to move on to a new page and to stay there. If you just press enter multiple times to move the text, the empty space you create will remain fixed and as you create more information on the previous page, your text will shift. The flow of the different sections of your document may be different, so please double check your requirements. Usually the abstract is next, however, you may be asked to include the table of content instead before the abstract, so please check your requirements. I'm going to have the abstract first and then I'm going to include the table of content. Table of content is a heading, so I'm going to use heading one style and I'm just going to remove the numbering. So after adding the table of contents on a new line under it, I'm going to insert the table of content from the references tab, click on table of contents and use custom table of contents because it gives you more control of what you want to include. The default setting is to include headings up to level three. However, if you need more levels to be displayed in your table of content, or if you prefer to have less, you can control this from here. In my case, I have up to level three, so the default settings are perfectly fine. Just click OK. There's the table of content. If your table of content doesn't display so nicely and you have some headings, for example, in bold, you can control the formatting of the table of content using the styles called TOC1, TOC2, TOC3, and so on. TOC is for table of content. TOC1 is a style that controls how the major headings listed in your table of contents look. So if any of them are not displaying the way you expect them to, you can modify TOC1 style and correct it. In my case, the table of content looks exactly as I expect. After the table of contents, I'm going to include list of figures and list of tables. Please use the words list of figures and list of tables rather than table of figures because table of tables doesn't sound very nice. Again, that's a major heading, so I'm going to use heading one style and I'm going to switch off the numbering. And on the new line under this heading, I'm going to insert the list of figures. From the references tab, you will see the captions group where the insert caption and the cross reference options are, which we've used already. And you will see insert table of figures. Click on that and choose do you want to include figure captions in this list or table captions. At the moment, I need figures. Just click OK and there are the two figures. Afterwards, you will need to include the list of tables. If you have a small number of figures and tables, it may be a good idea to put them both under the same heading, list of figures and tables, and simply create the list of the figures and underneath the list of tables rather than have two separate headings for each one. And that is again a major heading without a number. And on the new line under it, I'm going to insert the list, going again to the references tab, insert table of figures, and choosing from the caption label list that I need tables. And there are the two tables. The computer created the table of content and the list of figures and the list of tables by scanning the document and identifying all the headings that are marked with the heading styles and all the captions that are automatically created. However, those lists will not automatically update. You will need to tell the computer to update them. The easiest way to do that is to select the entire document since there are a lot of other automatic features that you've used and it's a good idea to force the computer to update them as well and then simply select the entire text of the document by either using the keyboard by pressing Control A or from the Home tab, right at the end, there's an option to select All. 
Once you've selected the entire document, simply right click anywhere in the document and you will see an option update field, which in this case, because the entire document is selected, will force the computer to update every automatic field that includes caption numbers, cross references, table of content, list of figures, list of tables. So choose to update the field. And you will get a prompt asking you, do you want to update only the page numbers in case your headings have moved or to recreate the entire table? Please always choose the entire table because you may have new headings inserted or some headings may have disappeared. So choose to update the entire table. Click OK. And then you'll be asked for the table of figures. Same question. Do you want just to update the page numbers or to update the entire table? I'm going to choose again to update the entire table for the same reasons. And the same for the second list. In my case, that's the list of tables. Again, update the entire table. Click OK. That way, if any changes have happened since the lists were created, it will update them to make sure they're accurate.